Hi, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems. Today I'm going to quickly show you how to track moving objects inside Mocha version 3 to get 3D camera solves off that moving object. To do this we need to actually solve the static camera for the scene and then calculate the track for the movement in the scene as well. So I'm going to start first off by tracking this scene in the static areas so that we can solve our camera. So first of all I'm just going to draw a shape in my background here because this background is obviously static back here. Uh, like so. I'm going to turn my grid on so we can see what's going on. And before I track I'm just going to go through and see if my guy is interfering with that layer at all. You can see here he just is so I'll come to that point. I'm just going to animate that out of the way. So we're going to have a little bit of an animated shape here to avoid that hand coming through like that a nice bit of big area over here so I'm going to add another shape to the same layer using the add to spline and again I'm just going to do the same thing I'm going to come through here and we can see how that surfboard starting to come in here so I'm going to just add a key here so that I don't uh, lose my shape for the first section and then I'm just going to animate that up out of the way so that surfboard is avoided when we do our track Let's just turn off our zoom window there. So we can see that's still a little bit off there, so I'm just going to come back to that key and move it up a little bit further, just like so. There we go. So now that we have these two shapes, what we can do is do what we call a unlinked track. The unlinked track works by unlinking the shape from the tracking information so that the shape stays put and your tracking information goes on underneath it. To do this we just come down to our link to track area and I'm going to just click on that and select none. Now I'm just going to use my align surface button over here to blow up my grid so I can see what's going on and we can start tracking. So in this particular case if you look at the background you can see how that background is not really panning in perspective much. It's a fairly flat pan going on there. So I'm actually going to turn off shear and perspective in this case. I'm going to make my minimum percentage of pixels about 90 and I'm going to turn on auto channel. Auto channel is just a nice way of picking the best color channel to track the information in the shot. You can stick it at luminance if you want to but sometimes it's better to choose auto channel just to try and get as much information as possible. So I'm going to start tracking that forwards now. And you can see here these shapes, that I'll, if I turn these shapes back on, you can see how they're staying put, but my tracking information is still tracking through with this grid. Let's turn those off again. We can also check to see how our track is going if I turn on Stabilize. You can see how that sky is no longer moving now, and we can watch to see how the track is performing through the shot. And we can see it's nice and solid there with that grid staying in spot on these clouds in the background. Once we have our shot tracked, we can just go back and quickly make sure it all looks okay. And that's looking pretty good. So once we've got our static track done in the background, we can come down to our camera solve. Now I'm doing a pan tilt zoom here, so I only needed one layer. If you're doing a parallax shot, either small parallax or large parallax, you will want to actually use more than one layer on different planes so you can work out the depth in the scene. Here we're just concerned about a camera pan, so I'm just using one layer to work out the pan. So I'm going to come to my camera self, and we'll just name our layer here, camera pan. And I'm going to choose pan tilt zoom and zooming because there's a little bit of zoom going on in this shot. So I'm going to click solve, and it'll go through and quickly solve that pan tilt zoom and give me a solution. So we can see here it's given me 98%, so that's a pretty good solve. Now normally what we would do here is now just go to our export camera data and export out to whichever format we want. Here I'm using Mocha Pro so I've got the option for After Effects 3D Motion or FBX options. If you've just got Mocha, uh, Mocha for After Effects version 3 you'll only get the After Effects 3D Motion data. In this case though we want to actually track the moving surfboard in the shot so we need to do a little bit more work before we leave Mocha. I'm going to track this surfboard now with the planar data. So we're going to come here and find it where we can see the surfboard in the shot the most. And I'm going to draw a large shape around the textured area that I can see on this surfboard. 
So I have one area here. Just because I want to keep it accurate, I'm going to also add to the shape using the Add to Spline and get a bit of the tip of the surfboard as well. I'm then just going to select these points and drag them back and get just a little bit of that arm as well just to make sure that we get as much of this surfboard as possible in all the detail that we can get. So we've got that now. Now once we've set up that, I'm also going to turn on my surface area and just line up this grid with the surfboard so I can see how that track is going. I'm just going to try and find some arbitrary points here so let's uh, put it to the edge of the texture detail up here like so and I'll bring that down a little bit just so it squares off like that. So once that's more or less lined up, we again just set our parameters. So I'm going to turn on perspective for this one because we've got a large perspective shift in this surfboard here. And I'm going to turn on my minimum perspectives of pixels to 90. And I'm going to turn on auto channel. We can then start tracking forwards. So let's just track this forwards. And we'll see how that's following along quite nicely. And then we'll have to track backwards for the rest of the shot. So rather than bore you with that large track, I've just paused it and finished off the track here. So now when I scrub forwards, you can see how that perspective track is working in the shot. We can see how those corner points are still lining up in the same areas and the grid's following along quite nicely. Now we can start to solve for this moving object in the shot. So we just go back to our camera solve. And again, I'm just going to call my layer surfboard so we know what's what. And in this case, we don't have to solve again. We've already solved the camera for the scene. So in this case, we just come back to export camera data again and choose copy to the clipboard. And what Mocha is doing is actually calculating the motion of this surfboard now relative to the camera that we solved. We can now switch over to After Effects to finish the job. Over in After Effects, I've got my scene set up here. So I'm just going to come to the start of the timeline and come up to Paste Mocha Camera. This plugin is free with Mocha version 3 in both AE and Pro versions. You just have to download it when you download our product. So now when you paste in the data, we get these nulls coming into the shot. Now these nulls have come in a little bit large, so I'm just going to scale them down a little bit. So I'm just going to select my scale keys. And we'll make it about 50% for all of them. So we can just see them nicely. Now when I play back, you can see how those nulls are actually following along with the surfboard correctly in 3D space, in both orientation and position. We can now use this information to actually set up some particles, or add in 3D text or various other items. This method is that you can actually reposition your surface how you want to put it in the scene once you've tracked it. So if I want to actually put, say for example, particle systems at the end of my surfboard here, I can now move my surface around to the end point of my uh, surfboard here. And if we scrub through, you'll see how that surface now aligns to the side like that, because we're still using the same planar tracking information that we did from the 2D solve. So once we have this, we're able to still export out that camera data again, and it will still solve for the same camera. This means now if I go back over to After Effects, we will be able to paste in the Mocha camera data for this area rather than the board as a whole. So back over in After Effects, we can try it again. So I'm going to come back down to my Edit and Paste Mocha Camera. And this time our surface nulls are at the edge of, this, of the uh, surfboard. Again, I'm just going to scale down those nulls a little bit. So I'm just going to select my scale. And again, we'll set it to about in this case 20%, just so we can see those nulls nice and small on the surfboard. And we can see how now that's sticking to the edge here, rather than over the whole board. To demonstrate this, let's just throw in some 3D particles. So I'm going to add a new solid. And then I'm going to come up to my effect menu and come down to Trap Code and use Particular. Over here in my settings, we're just going to set it up the emitter as a point. We're going to leave it as a point. I'm going to turn off my velocity, so I'm going to set that to zero. And then I'm going to open up my gray solid parameters down here and link it to one of my particles. So, sorry, one of my nulls. So we're just going to open up our particular settings, come to the emitter. 
and I'm going to link it to the central null, which is Mocha null 4. So I'm going to come to the position information, and I'm going to alt-click the position XY, so we can bring up our expressions, and just drag that pick whip down to the position information for the Mocha null 4. This will actually give me the right expression, which is going to put in the expression data to just get the X and Y values from the X, Y, Z values that I've got in my null. And I'm, then I'm going to do the same, I'm just going to copy that information, select my position Z, alt-click it again, paste in the information that I had at the top, but this time I'm going to change this value to temp2 to get the Z value from the null. So once we have that information and we start dragging forwards, we can see how the motion of that surfboard is now actually coming from the null and translating over to particular in 3D space. So that's how you track moving objects in 3D inside Mocha for After Effects version 3. You track the static scene first to get the camera solve, and then you track your moving object and export out that data with the camera solver. You can then paste it straight into After Effects and the way you place your surface will give you your surface nulls for that area. If you want more information, please check out our website at imagineersystems.com. We also do tweeting, status updating and blogging, or you can ask more questions on the forums. This has been Martin Brennand for Imagineer Systems.